Um, cool, so let's talk about forces. So we commonly think of force as kind of like a push or a pull on an object of some, something like that. Um, but as we know, two objects, do they have to be in contact for one to be exerting a force on the other? No, give me an example where you don't have to be in contact. Yeah, gravity, sun's pulling on the earth, magnetic force, electromagnetic charges, you know, things of a sort. So in the early days of physics, they didn't like talking about that because, you know, it seemed just a little bit weird. And, and truth be told to me, it still seems weird. So, but for these non-contact forces, we say that they create these fields at a distance and stuff like that, and that an object in that field can feel the force from that object and things of a sort. So that's where we also kind of introduce the, the term fields like gravitational field and electric field and magnetic field and things of a sort for some of those non-contact forces. Um, really quickly, your four fundamental forces, strong nuclear force, where's that act? So well, it technically acts everywhere, but where's the only place where we ever study it and where it only really matters? in the nucleus. So it holds the nucleus together. How does a proton feel about another proton? <laughs> no, they love each other. Strong nuclear force. So it turns out they love each other much more than they hate each other. Now they love each other through the strong nuclear force. They hate each other through the force number three on your list there. I'm sorry, force number two, the electromagnetic force. So it turns out the electrostatics are not favorable, but at very short distances, the strong nuclear force way overpowers that. So. Cool, so when I said, do they like each other, hate each other, obviously they live next to each other, so they must love each other from, but from a strong nuclear force perspective. Uh, so the electromagnetic force, everything we deal with electricity and magnetism will be in second semester, so we'll study that next semester. Uh, your weak nuclear force, we will not concern ourselves with in this course as well. Um, that's one of your fundamental forces dealing with radioactive decay, and then finally gravity, and gravity we definitely will be studying, uh, actually today, uh, as well as in physics one here. Um, so those are your four fundamental forces. The only one we're really gonna to touch on in this course is gravity. Uh, talk about Newton's laws of motion. We just learned that in Just in time. <laughs> long, long ago. <laughs> All right, Newton's laws of motion, the first law, often called the law of inertia, and it just says that a body that is in motion will continue in motion if there is no net force acting on it, or a body not in motion will continue to not be in motion if there is no net force acting upon it. So where, we, where might we envision something like this taking place? Space. So I like outer space, far away from any planets, far away from any stars, anything exhibiting gravity. So if I threw a baseball out in outer space, it would just keep going until finally it entered something's gravitational field or bumped into something or who knows what. But it would just keep going. It would have some constant velocity and just keep going forever. So that is Newton's first law. So one way we can phrase this, it's in bold on your hand out there. So if the sum of the forces or the net force, if you will, equals zero, then this thing is going to remain at constant velocity. Whether that means constantly not moving, zero velocity, or just some constant non-zero velocity, same diff. So law of inertia. Second law, and for those of you guys that have got a little physics background, this is the big one, right? So, sum of the forces equals ma. This is huge. This is the basis for a lot of the problem solving we'll do with physics problems. So in this case, what does m stand for? Mass, the SI unit of which is? Kilograms at acceleration. So meters per second squared. And when you take a kilogram and multiply it times a meter per second squared, you get? Newtons. So capital N. So the SI unit here for force, the derived unit here, so is a newton and it is a kilogram meter per second squared. Great. Um, <clears throat> cool, if you look at this, if I throw a baseball and if I throw a bowling ball, both as hard as I can. So in this case, which one can I accelerate to a greater maximum velocity? The bowling ball, really? So baseball, bowling ball, and I throw both. Which one can I get? 
Yeah, I can definitely get the baseball going a whole lot faster. So I will give it a greater acceleration while it's in contact with me. Notice once I release it, I'm not applying a force to it anymore, but up until that point, it has an acceleration, and I can definitely get the baseball to a greater acceleration. Why? Less mass. Now, if I throw them both as hard as I can, then theoretically I can apply the same force to both. So, assuming that the bowling ball, I don't tear my rotator cuff on the way or something, but assuming that doesn't take place, I give them the same force, but because the baseball is a much smaller mass, so I can give it a larger acceleration while I'm applying that force. So, that's kind of the gist of Newton's second law. We'll find out when we start setting up problems in any single uh, direction of motion, we can say that some of the forces equals MA. Finally, Newton's third law. What does Newton's third law say? Yeah, for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. One thing we might say is that force of object one on two is equal to the negative, negative meaning different, uh, exactly opposite direction, of force two acting on one. So in this case, I love the floor right now. Why do I love the floor? So gravity, and yes, the floor loves me back. So what's pulling down on me? Gravity, now is it really down? If, if you were an astronaut viewing this from outer space, you know, and somehow could see this in a bird's eye view or an astronaut's eye view. So is it really down? No, but I'm being pulled towards the center of the Earth. Great. But in this case, I don't like to think of it that way. So it's really I'm pulling up on the Earth. You guys are all focused on the Earth, you Earth-centric people. So it's all about me, guys. I'm pulling up on the Earth, and the Earth feels it. So, but equal and opposite force, totally true. We don't think about the, the flip side, but again, in terms of problem solving, we'll often talk about things like normal forces and we'll infer this quite a bit. So for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So I might want Chris to come and have his face apply a force to my fist, right? <laughs> so equal and opposite, all right.